announcement um, from Tom Hess. Would the person who borrowed the Windows 7 um, DVD please return it to Tom? So I hope the person who borrowed it came today. Um, in any event, you guys talk with each other. Talk to your friends and just explain. Copy the DVD what you want, but just return the original to Tom so that he can lend it out to other people so they can copy it. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, the um, my friends among the Chinese graduate students in physics from Dan were able to copy. Amazing the stuff they could get for me. Yeah. All right, so yeah. first, huh? Can we say no camera? Yeah, well, it's it's the stuff they got from me was not the stuff that the um, Justice Department cares about, which, which is uh, Hollywood movies and um, popular music. Things we want to do with uh, science. Um, all right, let's let me um, start with uh, asking by asking whether uh, anyone has a question. Yes. Are there any more problems on the homework due Wednesday? Brilliant question. I I added one. Um, I added one problem that's a little bit similar to the, let's see, the person aiming the camera also gets chalky. Um, so uh, I added one problem, but, um, and, and I hope it's not too much. When did you add it? I added it this afternoon. Okay. And um, let, let, let me just say that on Wednesday, I would certainly entertain uh, happily any requests for deferring the homework to the following Monday because of uh, the uh, fall break or the fact that I didn't add the second problem until 4 o'clock this afternoon. End of age, is End of age, is that? Yes, there's a debate tonight. Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday night. Um, right, so you guys have all the, all the reason in the world to postpone the moment. All right, um, so let me I can find some chalk. Get slider on this. Um, so we would we got to a certain point last time where I had basically derived uh, that the Feynman propagator at x was a heavy side function of x zero times something called delta plus of x plus a heavy side function at minus x zero delta plus minus x. So we, we had gotten uh, to that point, and of course this thing minus i um, uh, df is, um, I'm pending here because I want to get the right sign, it's uh, minus i <coughs> equal of q over 2 pi to the fourth, e to the i qx over <coughs> n squared minus i epsilon. Let's see, um, at least one person who uses the videos has asked me not to open the windows, but because of the background noise from Lomas, but if I hear another cough, I'm going to open the windows because we um, don't want to be in the, uh, we don't want to get sick. 
All right, well, let, um, let me now um, show that this, we saw that this, in fact, is uh, essentially the time-ordered product, the mean value in the vacuum of the time-ordered product. But um, let, let, let me, we saw that from a pathological point of view. I want to now show it from an operator point of view. And first of all, this, let, let's remind ourselves what this time-ordered product is. And in fact, when I say it's the mean value in the vacuum of the time-ordered product, I'm talking about the free theory. That is to say, the theory where you the Hamiltonian is simply quadratic in the fields, and um, the time dependence of the fields <coughs> is uh, given by e to the i plus or minus i kx, which is e to the plus or minus i k dot x minus k zero t. This is the, the kx is just Fourier's representation of things. The k zero t is the free field time dependence. So in other words, I'm saying that the fields obey the um, field equation box plus m squared phi of x uh, equals zero. And let me see if I've got, yeah, I've got the signs wrong. Okay, um, so t this time ordered product is of course theta of x0 minus y0, phi of x, phi of y plus theta y0 minus x0, phi of y, phi of x. I don't know why I'm writing so fast. Um, and these are um, fields in particular, um, phi of x is an integral uh, a of k, e, and now I've got to get these uh, signs right. I always gag as to whether it's plus or minus because it's half the time plus and half the time minus e or this is e to the i kx uh, plus a dagger of k in the minus i kx dqk over square root of pi q 2k0 and k0 is also called omega k and it's the square root of k vector square plus m square. Okay, well now, um, what do we have then? Should we go into the vacuum and, um, and when I say vacuum here, what I mean is that A of K annihilates the vacuum for all K. All momentum came. And okay, so what do we have here then? <coughs> All right, let's let's go to I just want him to know. That the windows yeah, are I'm open. sorry about this, but we don't want to all get sick. Um, he's protected by the fact that he just watches the video, mm. purely electronic. We have to deal with the viruses. Um, so this is equal to vacuum. Well, of course, theta of x0 minus y0, phi of x, phi of y, plus theta of y0 minus x0, phi of y, phi of x. So that's what we have. But now, remember that we were able to split a field into phi plus of x, which is just the first part. A of K, E to the 
pi kx and then this dqk over 2 pi q 2k0 inside the square root. Phi minus, we can say that this is equal to phi plus of x plus phi minus of x where phi minus is of x is just phi plus of x adjoint. So in other words, you get a minus sign and a dagger. It's just the second part of the field. That's phi minus. And so the point here is that we've got a phi plus that's going to hit the vacuum. So the only part that survives is phi minus. And we've got here a phi, a phi of x, and the only part that survives there is the minus. On the other hand, so in other words, we have the relation phi plus of x on the vacuum is 0, phi plus of y on the vacuum is 0. But we have the adjoint relations, phi minus of x on the vacuum is 0 and phi minus of y on the vacuum is 0. So we can rewrite this as 0, theta of x0 minus y0, phi minus of x, phi plus of y, plus theta of y0 minus x0, phi minus of y, whoops, phi plus of y, phi minus of x. And I got this one wrong also. But yes, I just want to, I'm, I'm a little confused. So is 5 plus is the A dagger term? Or no, 5 plus is the A term. So that seems weird that you call that. I mean, A dagger like plus. Oh, it's historical. Know. Okay, yeah. Um, it's not as bad as in astronomy when <laughs> people talk about recombination for the first time that electrons and protons got together. Uh -huh. um, sorry. Yeah. So, phi minus of x, the bottom line on the board. Phi minus of x is phi plus of x adjoint. Okay, so that's there's no there's no there's like a break between that. Right, right, right. There's a yeah. That's fine. Thanks. Good question. Okay. Um, but now notice what we can do. We can write this as theta of x zero minus y zero. And we can replace this term by the commutator. Because when we switch the order, we get zero. Because it's between vacuum states. Similarly, we can write this as theta of y0 minus x0 times phi plus of y phi minus of x. On the other hand, the commutator, in other words, what we have here is A of K, a dagger of K prime, is delta of K minus K prime. And so the commutator of phi plus and phi not minus is a number, complex number. And the commutator of, of over here of phi plus and phi minus is another complex number. So since the vacuum state is normalized, this is just theta of x0 minus y0 times this commutator plus this one times uh, this heavy side function times this commutator. Now, we have 
at least my notes here say we have, but I don't remember that far back in class. Yes, we, we actually computed what phi plus with phi minus is. Uh, this was equation 37 in the online notes on coherent, what they call coherent. Um, what we found was phi plus of x, phi minus of y, well, what is it? Well, it would be d cubed. Uh, in the notes, I wrote p and q. So d p q, d q p d q q, two pi q is a two square root of q zero p zero. Then you have e to the i p x minus i q y k of p a dagger of q. This is delta of q minus p minus q. Is, is there a question? Actually, yes. Why is that a function of that? Yeah. Ready, ready, ready. Oh, no, no. I just figured out the question. Well, why don't you vocalize it anyway and earn your chocolate? All right. Um, I was wondering why we had shifted from why you were basically using p's and q's. Oh. And I, well, the, the alternative is k and k prime or k and p. I mean, it's, the real reason is that I was mousing equations in from one of my documents to another, and it's just the p and q are way more Anything else? Yeah. Um, so I noticed that from the third line down to the fourth line down, um, we lose the the zero states. Um, what happened there? What happened to the vacuum? Yeah. Well, this commutator you see is is just a complex number. In other words, this thing here is phi plus of x phi minus of y commutator is just an integral p q p d q q. 2 pi q 2 square root of q0 zero, p0 zero, e to the i px minus i q y times delta of p minus q mm -hmm. because of this delta function relation. So in other words, this is a number. It isn't a, the remote? These are operators, but their commutator is just a number, because we're dealing with free fields. If we weren't dealing with free fields, this thing at different times would be. And so this thing is integral d q p over two pi q two p zero e to the i. And now uh, p and q are the same, and so this is p x minus y. This is a four vector in a product, and this is what we call delta plus of x minus y. Oh, sorry. Right, let me make sure that I don't have a i or a sine loose here. Yeah, okay, this is all right. What? So the delta function is only over the three vector. This That's vector. right. So why are we... Well, we have a three-vector integration. Right, but why are we changing the Q0 into another P0? Ah, very good question. Because Q0, you see, is square root of M squared plus Q vector squared. Um, <coughs> That's worth the chocolate. You know what? Okay, so now we're at the point where we've seen that the mean value in the vacuum of this time ordered product of phi of x, phi of y is just theta of x zero minus y zero delta plus of x minus y. That's the first term. The second term is the same, but y and x are interchanged. So 
So this, here we just replace x by y, y by x. And so <coughs> this thing is theta of y0 minus x0, which was the coefficient, and then we have delta plus y minus x. On the other hand, over here, or let me say that last time we had derived this relation, this came from taking this four-dimensional integral introducing a dose contour, doing the contour integration, we got this relation. And so this says then that this mu value in the vacuum of the time order product is minus i delta f of x minus y. And in fact, one could have written this a little bit more succinctly. It's simply time-ordered product 